e-mobility is all the rage these days, whether it's electric bicycles such as this, or electric cars, of course, like this e-golf. So it's basically a normal golf, but with an electric motor instead of an internal combustion engine. So in this video, I'm gonna tell you what's different about it. Blue stripes mean electricity. I'm gonna point out what's good. Hmm, feels just like a normal golf. What's not so good? It'd be better if the charging port was at the front. And of course, take it for a drive. Can you hear that? Silence. But for now, I'm going for a spin on this thing because it's a right laugh. Yes, it's so quick. Let's kick off this review by talking about the design changes that eGolf has over the normal Golf. It's got a little eGolf badge there just to point out this is the electric version. And then to be doubly sure, there's some blue striping running across the front and into the lights because according to Volkswagen, blue is the color of electricity. The eGolf also gets some C-shaped daytime running lights and a completely redesigned front bumper. That not only looks different, but it improves the aerodynamics, which helps Reduce drag, which means that you can go further on a charge. As we move down the side, you'll notice it has these unique 16-inch alloy wheel designs, which are mainly filled in, once again, to reduce drag, to improve range. You've also got low rolling resistance tyres as well. And as you move down the side, it's got some unique side skirts, which yet again improve the car's aerodynamics for improved range. At the back, there's a little roof spoiler there, and the car has smoked rear light clusters and they have sweeping indicators as well. The rear bumper design is slightly different than the normal Golf as well, once again for reduced drag, though for some reason they've kept the sort of like weird fake exhausty things that they have on the normal Golf. Why did you do that Volkswagen? It's the e-Golf, it says it's there, why are you having these fake exhausts? It's mad. Or maybe I'm mad. Who's mad? Volkswagen or me? Click on the pop-out banner up there to vote. Who's the maddest? <laughs> One of the good things about this car is that Volkswagen hasn't compromised the passenger space when converting it to electric power. So sometimes they put the batteries under the seats, but they haven't here, which is good. So it's just the same in the back as in the normal internal combustion engine Golf. It's very, very roomy for a car of this size. Really nice. In fact, if you want more detail on what it's like with three people in the back or to fit a child seat in, click on the pop-out banner up there or follow the link below the video to watch my detailed in-depth review of the Golf range as a whole. Now you might be wondering, where the heck has Volkswagen put the batteries in this car while well, they're underneath the boot floor? As a result, the capacity has gone down from 380 litres to 340, but it hasn't really affected the usable space because the normal boot area with the raisable boot floor in its normal position is the same. So look, I can easily fit my Go Cycle in there. No problemo at all. It's all very usable. What's happened is the space you get under here is less, but there's still enough room for your charging cable. So actually, that isn't really gonna bother you too much. However, if you need a bigger boot on your electric car, click on the pop-out banner up there to watch my full in-depth video review of the Kia e-Nero. It has a 450 litre boot. Wow. Here in the front, there are very few changes over the normal Golf, though you do get some blue stitching on the steering wheel, some more blue stitching down here, some blue stripes here on the gear selector, and it says e-Golf there as well. Very, very different. Oh, and there's some Iridium Matrix inserts rather than just normal inserts. Now, in VW speak, Iridium Matrix means grey. Wow. This car has the upgraded infotainment system as standard the golf gets an eight inch system with satellite navigation built in. This is the all singing, all dancing, Discover Pro, whatever it's called with traffic alerts, gesture controls, internet connectivity, but that'll cost you 1500 quid. It's not entirely necessary. This car also has the 500 pounds upgraded digital driver's display, which is nice. I do like it and it has some specific e-golf dials there with your charge and your power and stuff like that rather than your normal rev counter and thing it's quite useful you can actually change the display of this as well and look at different things and features and have the navigation up there if you want to as well but really that's your lot now then it's time for the car wow five annoying things about this car in 2020 the e-golf will be obsolete because this current version of the golf will be replaced by the mark 8 and there won't be an electric version because Volkswagen's golf size electric car will be the ID3, which is purpose-built as an electric car from the ground up, unlike this thing. Some electric cars have charging ports on both sides to make it easier to charge. Others have them in the nose, which also makes it easier to charge. This one has it in the place of where the normal fuel filler is. Just 
because it's a normal golf and that is a bit annoying. It takes 40 minutes to charge this car up to 80% full, whereas it only takes 30 minutes to do the same with the new Peugeot E208. So you're gonna be tied up at a charging station for longer. Volkswagen says this car can do 144 miles on a full charge, which isn't really very impressive. The very latest Nissan Leaf can do 240 miles. And if you click on the pop-out banner up there, you can see my in-depth video review of the Nissan Leaf. While the car has different driving modes, there isn't one for a sporty setting. Why not? Just because it's an electric car doesn't mean that I don't want to have some fun. It's not all negative though. Here's five good things about this car. Volkswagen has just reduced the price of the e-golf, so it now starts at £31,000, but you get a £3,500 government grant off it because it's an electric car. And then when you factor in the £1,600 car wire discount, it can actually be pretty good value for money. In fact, there's even more discount if you buy it on finance instead of cash. Depending on your electricity tariff, this thing can work out to around 4p per mile in terms of electricity. Now compare that to a 1.5 petrol Golf, which will cost about 12p per mile in normal fuel. Also, if you actually get your energy from renewable sources, then it's guilt-free motoring. Now look at this, instead of an internal combustion engine, we've got an electric motor, and you can see just how much more compact it is. There's plenty of room under the bonnet. So this thing produces 136 horsepower, 290 newton meters of torque. It drives the front wheels by, well, no gearbox really, it's just single drive, all very simple. And power comes from a 36 kilowatt hour battery. In all, it's good for 0 to 60 in 9.6 seconds and top speed of 93 miles an hour, which is easily over the legal speed limit. Hmm, not bad. As you drive along, the car emits a sound from the front so that pedestrians can hear it coming because obviously there's no engine noise. But if you want to, you can turn that off because that will increase your chances of knocking them down. <laughs> there are various eco modes which reduce the motor's performance and the top speed and they also reduce the drain of the air conditioning system so you can eke out every last bit of charge. Now don't worry though, if you suddenly floor the throttle, the motor will still give you full performance for safety reasons. So then, what's this e-golf like to drive? Well, do you know what? It's just like a normal golf, only ever slightly more pleasant when you're in town because you haven't got an engine ahead of you making a noise or vibrating away. It's all super relaxing. It's good over bumps as well. I do really like it. And there's no gearbox either, so you're not having to change gears. And it's better than the normal autos you get in the standard golf as well because it's not clunking and changing in between gears and a bit jerky when you're pulling away. It's all super, super, super smooth. I love it and you get a really quick response from the electric motor if you need to zip through a gap in traffic. It's very, very good. Also, you've got regenerative braking, so if I put it into B mode, when I lift off the accelerator, you get more engine braking than you would in a normal car as the motor pretty much acts in reverse to recoup energy and put it back into the battery. It's all very relaxing and the economy around town is good. So I'm getting 4.5 miles per kilowatt hour. So bearing in mind, we've got a 36 kilowatt hour battery that works out to about 160 miles is possible at that rate. So not bad, really not great compared to some other electric cars, but fine if you're just going to be driving it around town. And when you get out on the motorway, let's say I'm cruising at 70 miles an hour, we'll see what that does for the economy. The performance to get up there is actually pretty decent, but if I just sit now at 70, as you can see, it's not so good. I'm now getting about 2.5, 2.2 miles per kilowatt hour, so that's basically halved my potential range. Oh well, let's just back off and get some energy back into the battery as we get that engine braking effect again. I keep saying engine, I'm programmed, I mean motor braking, regenerative braking, whatever you want to call it. But it's really quiet on the motorway. You do notice the tyres a little bit more, maybe the wind, but that's only because you haven't got the engine whirring away. It's really relaxing. The seats are comfy. It is a nice car to travel in. It's nicer than the normal Golf. It's nicer for being electric. What about though when you're on a twisty road? You see all the batteries, they add an extra 300 kilos. So this is quite a bit heavier than the normal Golf. As a result, they've had to fit slightly stiffer suspension to stop it leaning so much in the corners, but I don't know whether that's going to help too much. I think you're going to feel it once you start to get a little bit carried away, because the Golf does handle well. Oh, traction control light's coming in sooner than it would do normally. 
<laughs> Look, it's, it's not happy, but it'll go around corners all right. I can feel it leaning and, and just wallowing a bit more than the normal car, but it's still fairly fun just because of electric power. Now it's starting to feel a bit kind of looser because of that extra weight, but it's all right. It's all right. This is absolutely fine on a twisty road. It's really pleasant to drive. Like I say, it's like a Golf, just better. It's not better than the Golf R or the GTI, of course. But compared to all the other Golfs, I do prefer this one's driving experience. However, if you want the electric car with the best driving experience, click up there to watch my full in-depth video review of the Tesla Model 3. So then, what's my final verdict on the Volkswagen e-Golf? Well, I like it because it's a Golf and it's good to drive because it's electric. The only problem is it's a little bit off the pace compared to the very latest electric cars in terms of its range, its charging times, and its performance. Also, it's about to be obsolete. Though that could play into your favour. You see, there's some amazing deals to be had. I've seen these available with a £2,000 deposit on a lease deal for just £200 a month. So if you don't need all that extra range, it could work out well for you. Though for most people, most of the time, I think it's not one of the best electric cars. Let's just leave it at that. But the... Right. And it says e-golf down there. You know, the very latest Nissan Leaf can do 100 net. So rather than having eight, fuck. <laughs>